the East African tradition of the Maasai tribe is to greet one another with the words Kasirian and Gera, which is Swahili for, so how are the children? In that community, the well-being of their children is the highest priority. If you are interested in participating in thought-provoking conversations about the well-being of children and families, please tune in every Wednesday at 3 p.m. to Fresh Start Today on 860 AM WNOV. Together, we can save our children. Something goes wrong all the time, you know, but he took ownership. That was great leadership. And um, that's what's going on. So listen, family, today is the second of February, and it is the second uh, second day of what we call Black History Month here in the United States of America. So maybe you have a black history uh, fact that you would like to call in and share just to enlighten the family. Give us a call at 414-444-5250. So that could be a black history uh, local fact. That could be national. It can be state I don't know, but we're going to have a great time on the show this morning. We have a disability law attorney who's going to be coming in. Uh, She deals with Social Security uh, claims. And Attorney Yang will be here in in about 15 minutes or so. We're going to talk for about a half an hour or so. Just about that whole disability claim process, you know, what it it means to have a disability attorney. What do they do? How do they process cases? You know, uh, preparing folks to go before an administrator law judge, you know, um, all of those kind of things. What kind of questions do they ask during a hearing and, you know, what that prepping is involved? How important are medical records and what you should and what you shouldn't do? And then also your witnesses. What type of witnesses do you bring um, into this process and how are those witnesses used for your best interest? So listen, if you have questions about disability law, you know, give us a call this morning at 730 at 414 444 Five two five zero four one four 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 five two five. You know those are the magic numbers. You can win. We can play them numbers. Maybe we can win some. I don't know. Do you do you do you gamble? Do you scratch off? Do you do anything? Pick three. Pick two. Dominoes and poo. I only gamble on things I'm quite sure of. All right, gotcha, gotcha. So we, we'll talk about those things. Now listen. Let, let me tell you something about. And then at eight around eight o'clock, uh, the blacksmith, Dr. Romel Smith, will be in, and we're going to be talking about. You know, there was a poll that was done. We're going to talk about it. It was it was the public policy polling uh, out of North Carolina. And they conducted a survey of uh, Milwaukee County, and and they found that David Clark is very unpopular and has almost no chance of being reelected next year based off a media release that they sent. So. We're going to talk about that. We're going to look at the three questions that was on the survey. We're going to talk, see whether or not, you know, how do folks, because it was 1,260 folks who were surveyed. <laughs> I never got a call, you know, phone but card. a lot of folks probably, no, they said they, they, they used, their, their method was phone calling. But this is my thing. I don't know how many folks who are listening to this show actually were contacted by the public policy polling, which, um, like I said, they conducted a survey from January 27th through the 29th, but maybe you were called. Maybe you want to share that. But if you weren't, I'm going to pose the three questions that relates to Sheriff Clark um, and have you all call in. We do our own unofficial poll on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. We're going to talk about a lot of things um, at the 8 o'clock hour. So I want you all to stay tuned. We have a caller on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Good morning, family. Good morning. This is Kathy. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Kathy. How are you doing? Great. I have a question for you, and I missed part of it. I think it was this week someone called me, and they said they talked about uh, some of the state elected officials having an event up in Madison, taking a bus up to Madison, Wisconsin. Some elected officials are going to be taking buses up, and people can get on them. You know anything about that? No, not, not that's coming to mind. I do know... Um you know, let, let me look, because I did get a communication, and I'll revisit that. But if you stay tuned, I promise within the next hour I will share those details. Because there's a lot of things that's going on in Madison. And one thing I think is really important, that we have to really make sure we get that news out of there, uh, out there so that we all can get on the bus, yeah. get in our cars. What we need to do to get up to Madison, I know there's some um, lobbying days coming up at the end of February, I believe the 28th. But um, there's a lot going on in Madison, and we, we certainly need to make you all abreast. So stay tuned, Kathy, and yeah, I will I get... Think it was on, excuse me, I think it was on Sherman Show. It was, just like, it was just strictly talking about going up there for Black History Month. I don't had a program. I know there's a speaker coming uh, one evening, so I was one of those, if you had any information on the bus. And the other I do. I have for you, and um, the other one I have for you that I couldn't call you during the day because of my job that I do. No problem. Um, you talked the other, yesterday about foster care, right? Yes, I always do, yeah. Okay, when you said, what should we do... 
um, we should contact Community Brainstorm and see if they could put it on a calendar um, for some time this year to bring people in from foster care. Well, black, well stop, Kathy. Boys, see, they need to be sued. They need to be sued. That's what you said. What needs to be done? More black kids. Hold on, Kathy. Kids. Hold hold on, because you own something. February the twenty fifth. Now, I'm, I'm glad you called and you said that. Mm-hmm. But Russell Stamper, Judge Russell Stamper, sent invitations to the Secretary of the Department of Children and Families, Eloise Anderson. Yes. He sent an invitation to Dr. Robin Joseph, the Division Administrator from the Milwaukee Child Protective Services. He mm-hmm. sent an invitation to Children Hospital, Robert or Bob Duncan. He sent an invitation to St. A's, as well as myself and Dr. Ramel Smith, to be a part of a panel discussion that focuses on what is child welfare in Milwaukee um, doing to service black families, looking at Uh service delivery and outcomes. It's my understanding that folks from children have not identified a person to be a part of this panel, um, that the division administrator has not responded to be on this panel and that the secretary of the department, her assistant put it on her calendar, but it's my understanding again, and it could be limited, but it's my understanding that that does not constitute or guarantee that she will be at the table. So what can folks do so that we can have a balanced, informed conversation about how black families and children are being I treated? Answer. I have the answer. I have one answer, and I'm not kidding you. I mean, we're not, we're not going to put none on a form at the brainstorm unless we can guarantee they come. I'm going to tell you, I got, I got one fantastic answer. Do the same thing they're doing to those boys at Lincoln Hill. We need to go in with federal authorities and sue them. There's no reason why a black person with kids can't go to their they daddy. If they adjudicated the father, they should have to go through a, a parenting class. There's no way you have to, the mother didn't go through a parenting class before she got pregnant, did she? No, that baby went home with her. They should go to those dads without going through a bunch of stuff and checking their background record and see if they fit. Stop taking these kids from the daddy. And the problem is that a lot of these daddies don't know until the end because the women make it difficult for the men to visit their children, okay? Very difficult. They ought to stop that so these kids can be connected in case something happens like this here. Them kids should go directly to, to them, them daddies with no circumstances. If something happens, they take them white kids and they give them right to their parents, okay? They give them right to the next of kin, aunt, relative. we got to put black kids all through here so they can make money off you and show statistics that's not right that all them white kids can do it. You know, look at the survey. How many white kids get to go to other relatives and go home after a year or six months of working with both, right. both sides of the family? That is not fair. Bring a lawsuit on their butt. I'm talking bring a big one, a class action, or bring something down. Have it I'm surprised there hasn't been a class action lawsuit, and well, that's you know, real that's talk. What I'm saying, but you know why? Because I think out the box. We're not going to sit here on the phone and say, oh, and all these guys are calling me, and one guy called me. I felt sorry for him. I was listening to, even to your case. I felt sorry. No, he just adjudicated the goddamn daddy. The kid goes to him ASSP. No questions asked about his background, how he take care of himself. You didn't ask me how I took care of myself, so I had that baby. I got to take that baby home from the hospital with no questions asked after I have a baby. That is their baby. You give it to them, and that is it, okay? That, that doesn't make any kind of sense to put people through all this, all this crap for nothing, okay? You're- the baby right. goes home with the, the child goes home with the next person that is the relative. Not go through all these classes and ask him all these questions with a garden and light him, and then you got to pay for all that. What is going on? Sue them. That's all you got to do. Is say they don't come to the board. You go down there like like that. that they're home for them boys, and you bring them. You have an investigation done, and that is it. You treat them the same way they're going to treat them white folks. You get your kid back right away. No questions asked. You're right. I, I appreciate that, Kevin. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Right. That's the only answer we can do because I couldn't call. I'm sorry I'm going fast. No, these people need to get together, have a meeting without them. You bring lawyers in there and what the laws are. If you got any statistics on foster care and how black people are done, we can run our own meeting, and this is what we're going to do. If they don't come up in here, we're taking it to court. Bottom line. I got you. And you know, I'm all for that, Kathy. Thank you for calling and thank you for bringing it up because I completely forgot about that. But again, February the 25th, at Community Brainstorming over at St. Matthew Church. Um, I think they do the breakfast at 8 o'clock till 9 o'clock, and 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock is the program. And I do know that St. A responded immediately, and they said they are glad and they're, you know, they're honored to uh, be a part of this discussion. But again, Children's Hospital, who serve thousands of black children and families under their multiple programs, um, they need to be at the table. They make, they make a whole lot of money. 
you know, they, they, you know, they got the community family counseling, child and family counseling services. They have the foster care and the adoption services. Then you have their medical services. You know, how many black families are served in their clinics and in the emergency room and in the hospital? You know, so, you know, those folks should be at the table. Tell us, what are they doing? Uh, the department certainly should be there. Uh, what are folks doing to safely reduce the number of black children who are in our local foster care system? That number right now, based on DCF's most annual, most recent annual report from 2015, December the 31st, is that 67.6% of our local foster care community is made up of black children, youth, and their Family. Somebody needs to talk to us about what is the plan to uh, effectively serve and support uh, this population of clients. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back on the other side. Are uh, we at the breakfast table on the Rise and Shine Morning Show? You're listening to WNLV 860 AM, The Voice. We'll be right back. Woo! I feel real good right now. It's 733 in the morning. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show on WNLV 860 AM, The Voice, with your favorite cousin, Brother Jean's Bay Boy, Jermaine Reed, and my favorite cousin, Mr. Keon Jackson Malone. Now, I know we have a guest in the studio. Attorney Yang is here, and she's going to be talking about disability law. And, uh... And we have two callers, and I just want to say for those folks who want to know what can we do as a community before trying to get a class action lawsuit or getting a law passed or things we can do in the immediate as it relates to getting folks at the table uh, who are responsible for managing child welfare services that impact so many black children and families in this community. You can uh, email the Secretary of the Department, Eloise Anderson, at E-L-O-I-S-E, period, Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N, at Wisconsin.gov, and Wisconsin is spelled out. You can email the division administrator, Robin E. Joseph, by uh, R-O-B-I-N, capital E, period, Joseph, J-O-S-E-P-H, at Wisconsin, spelled out, dot gov. Then you have Robert Duncan over at Children's Hospital, Wisconsin. That's R. D U N C A N at C H W dot org. Or there's Amy Herps, A M Y P period H E R B S T at C S S W dot org. So those are Department of Children Family and the Division Administrator as well as Children Hospital Representatives. If you want to call, you can call the Secretary of the Department at 608. 608- Four two two seven thousand, or you can call the division administrator at four one four three four three five five zero zero. Now, if you need those numbers or the contact information again, feel free to give me a call, and I'll make sure you get those four one four three 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 thirty three seventy two. So that's really important, and um, contact your legislators. You know. Anyway, so we have a caller on the phone. Good morning, caller. Good morning. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm calling regarding the uh, freeway shooting. Yes, sir. Uh, what you think? I think they should slam dunk these people. Uh, it's too many of these bozos riding around here shooting uh, innocent people. And, and, and we, we got doctors out here, teachers, preachers, students, and uh, people getting hit with these stray bullets. Uh, it, it's, it's pathetic. Something needs to be done about it. And I, I don't care who don't like it. Supposedly happened to your mama. Or your daughter or your wife get hit by a bullet. You know, it, it's ridiculous. Something got to something got to happen here quickly. And the other thing too, they need to do something about these people running these red lights. Uh, they come through you on a on the left side like they're a firefighter and and, and, just, and go clean through the light. You right? You know, something to be done. And every night, every night, somebody is uh, crashing uh, these cars through red lights and getting shot. They need to do something about it because it's. It's horrible. It really is. It really is. Thank you for yep. calling, family. You be well. You be safe. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine morning show with your favorite cousin. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Jermaine and Keon and community. Uh, two things. You know that, that it's interesting as they uh, – I don't have a problem. They got enough laws on the books. They don't have to crack down even more. But you notice lately the, the opioid and the heroin uh, deaths are three times more than the uh, gun deaths and even the, the accidents. So we got, it's the problem all the way around. But they treat that differently. Some guy got convicted of selling heroin to somebody that died. He got 12 years. Then we just have a young man who hit some carjacked and got 41. 
So it's even even the treatment of it and even the the, the how it's being handled is it's like two different ways because it's two different communities. And so so I, I, I like what Kathy was saying about we have to charge up these systems about fairness, equity, um, because uh, we're seeing it right in front of us. They put like uh, millions and millions of dollars into heroin and opioid. And then if we think about it, the squeaky wheel gets the gets the attention, gets the wheel, because nothing would have happened in Sherman Park with any additional money if that had that the the uh, mini riot hadn't happened last summer. That nobody proposed, oh, we gonna come down in give you a hundred million to give you this. No, it was a reaction to the anger that came out of that that, that formed years that of incident. oppression. Yes. Yeah, and so so how do we do that? And and yesterday, I apologize, I couldn't get in. I was on my way to work, and I had to get out the car real quick. I, I thought when I was here in that conversation that you were having, which one? You talking about morning or the, afternoon? Oh, uh, the morning one. Okay, the morning one. Yes, sir. Well, you know what was interesting. For 400 years, just like you were having that debate over whether bathrooms or whatever, how people felt, I thought for 400 years we were treated exactly the same way. We, you couldn't drink out of a water fountain, yet the water came from the same place. You couldn't use the same bathroom, yet the bathroom, what left the bathroom, went to the same place. You, you were separated on the bus. You were separated. We were separated in every way possible as though we were, as we were treated as second. And this was up to the 60s. And the, all of these things happen. And sometimes when you heard the language yesterday, I think Dorothy called in uh, and talked about that. You heard the language. You would think that you were hearing language of, of 1950-something when the people were actually putting those policies together to keep us out of anything and everything that would make us human. And so I don't want to become like the oppressor in my thinking. I want to try to at least think through, uh, not only with my faith, but also think through those things that are common sense and try to be uh, the best person I can. But I, I internalized oppression sometimes will allow you or will force you or get you into the thinking and you become no different than your oppressor. And you're try- I don't, don't want to do that. I, I work hard not to, to fall into that trap of becoming like that, which I dislike. And gotcha. so, and so but I think pressing these issues of foster care, pressing these issues of, the unfairness in the system, but also we're talking about the people saying it. I want the elected officials to say it. You, you know, I always admire, and we could we could have disagreements. Mike McGee, senior, or even some of the uh, Ben Johnson, all these people who could be activists is as elected officials. Some people would shake the tree, and community agencies or other people would make sure they caught the leaves and got what was necessary to aid and to benefit their community. Uh, there are no tree shakers now. They're, well, the tree shakers are much more, um, uh, I think they speak differently. They have a different way they're doing it. But you got to have a combination of the tree shakers and those who know how to pick up what's there to form and deliver policies and solutions that a community can benefit from. I think you're absolutely uh, correct, uh, Uncle Tyrone. I think folks in this community, because when it comes to foster care particularly, there are more children in Milwaukee County's pool of foster care than any other place throughout the state, in any other county. So I do think that our elected officials should be putting a phone call or signing a letter, one one letter they all assign and say, listen, we need Children's Hospital at the table. You know, we need uh, the division administrator and we uh, the division administrator as well as the secretary of the department at the table. Not a surrogate, not somebody who is a uh, stand-in, but we need those individuals who are responsible for uh, providing services to our most vulnerable population of folks in this community to provide us information and to ask questions. Um, so I agree with you there, and I'm hoping that you know folks who are listening, call your elected officials and tell them, call the Common Council, call the mayor, call these folks and say, listen, we have a crisis in our community, and it does not appear to be getting any better. So and I agree crisis. with you. I agree with you there. But the if we don't make any demands. Come, the crisis should not come to the level of a riot for people to say, oh, we need to do something. It should never I, get I, to that. I, it, I, it, 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 this is, this is, and there are plenty of good people out there who are advocates. There are plenty of elected officials who are advocates. But if you coalesce, like when I see a news conference and I see uh, the state, the county, 
the uh, city and all those officials in one room together speaking on behalf of the community saying this needs to happen, needs to happen. then I see the power of many. And then I see that a lot of them individually go and make things happen. But we just need that power to be coalesced so that it's housing and, and jobs and all kind of things so people don't know that they can turn to those people they elect to get things done for them and, and all right. make things happen for them. I got you. Let, let, let me say this because I, I think, you know, there's this thing called accountability. And I think until we demand accountability um, of systems who are getting paid to service up, Things are not going to get any better. I was looking at Children's Hospital Wisconsin um, dot org. Their executive leadership. There are sixteen people on their executive leadership. Um, can you tell me how many of those folks are black? I need more. Huh? It's, that's probably that's probably the issue. Next issue for even professional Milwaukee. We get asked to be on boards of nonprofits, or we get asked to be on certain boards, but certain boards you don't see. Uh, African Americans represented at any level, especially in the corporate. Now they have a board. Different. They, I agree. Oh, no, with you. I they have a board, and there's one black person, as far as I know, female that's on that board. But in terms of their executive leadership, folks who are oh, no, the chief financial it. officer, the president, chief executive officer, the executive vice president, of community services, the corporate vice president, of marketing and communication, chief operating officer, children's hospital, and executive vice president, children's hospital and health system, chief medical officer, VP quality, president, primary care. Chief Nursing Officer and Vice President, Pediatrician in Chief, Corporate Vice President, Government and Legal Affairs, Chief Information Officer, Chief Development Officer and President of Children's Hospital Wisconsin Foundation, Surgeon in Chief, President Medical Staff, Chief Administrator Office, CEO Children's Specialty Group. Not one of them are African American. Not one of them are black. That's the problem. Right, most talented people exist throughout this community. So what does those that say? People with the talent that tells me that. It's it's uh it's just like what I see in the administration in Washington. It's gone backwards. People are get staying comfortable. They're they're putting people around them to reflect what they want to believe in and do. And so they're forgetting that there are a whole another group of people who they could bring to the table. They could bring different opinions and values and experiences. It's but that's but that's happening around us. And uh, people have to speak to that. But it's happening some, in some parts of government, too. There's other parts where we're all the, the people who can represent. So it, it is a, an issue. It's an issue all the way around. Uh, the people that elect, the people that appoint them, and then the people who approve their appointments can ask those the questions, too. But the corporate side, you, 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 have, valid, you have a valid question. I can't answer it because I understand. Uh, they, you know, they, I can't they, ask yeah. you. Only Children's Hospital right. can un- answer why they don't have any black folks or African Americans on their executive leadership, especially when their motto is "Kids deserve the best." Well, if you're serving a lot of black children, you have these clinics in our community at Titonia and North Avenue up here in Midtown. You know, then if they deserve the best, black kids deserve the best too. And how do you show that? Demonstrate that you have representation yeah. on your executive leadership that looks like them. So right. I gotta and if take... you want to, you can find them because you can recruit them the way I know many of CEOs you can. to go out and recruit the kinds of people they want. If they wanted diversity and they wanted various kinds of people around them, they would go out and find them. They went nationwide, but they found them and they found Oh, yeah, we got to, talented to black them. folks. Oh, we, we got them all over the Qualified black we folks, go yes, we do. Far. Right. Yes, yeah. you do. All right. So. Thanks a lot. We have one more you call, are. then I got to switch shifts because we got a guest in the studio talking about disability law. Yes, good morning. Um, hello, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Uh, I, I thank you for having me on your show, man. God bless you. I wanted to let you know what's going on, man. Um, my name is Jamie Zimmer, and my fiance name is Noel Barr. And we've been going through this stuff with uh, Children's Court now going on two years, man. And they do a lot of dirty, illegal, and underhanded stuff. And, man, it's a, it's a, the judge who in charge out there of this, um, I'm not sure if you know this, she a uh, tight judge, and, like, she... She let these people take these people kids for no reason, man. And it's a it's an ongoing process. It's been going on for years now. I know a father who's been doing everything he's supposed to be doing for the last six years, and he haven't got his daughter back yet. And he's one of the best dads I know. Like, and me and my my, my fiance, we we we're we're the incredible parents. And we shouldn't be going through what we're going through, like, man. And I just wanted to say thank you for letting people know what's going on. Okay, but well, two things I want you to do. 
I want you to get in contact with your elected official, and I want you to have them contact those folks that I talked about and invite them to be at community brainstorming. All the parents that you know who are in situations like that, you all need to get in the room, too, because sometimes you're fighting this battle and you're thinking that you're alone, but there's so many other families who are in similar situations. We do meet. We meet together. Okay. Well, I want you to call me offline, 414-333-3372, and we'll have a conversation. All right. Uh, Listen, I have in the studio with me a great woman and uh, attorney... Kashua Yang, we're going to come back on the other side of this break. We're going to talk about disability law, um, and you all stay tuned. Good morning. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show with your favorite cousin, Brother G. Bay Boy, Jermaine Reed, my favorite cousin, Mr. Keon Jackson Below. And we have in the studio with us Attorney Kashua Christy Yang. Good morning, Attorney Yang. Good morning. It's great to be here. It is great. The sun is shining, and you're looking fabulous as always. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing well. And you? I'm doing great. Welcome to the Rise and Shine Morning Show. It's my understanding this is your first time being here in the studio. And I just want the community to get to know um, some things around Social Security Disability Law. And um, you are a Social Security Disability Attorney, right? Yes. So, so what exactly is that? So Social Security uh, Attorneys represent claimants. Uh, these are disabled individuals who apply for Social Security disability benefits who have been denied and then the attorney appeals their case for them. There are several levels of appeal and so the attorney can come in at any of those levels depending on what the attorney deems to be appropriate. Okay. So now before we get into this bill at all, let me just say because I think your story, your journey is amazing. Um, Thank you. You came to America when you were six years old. Yes. As a refugee. Yes. And you have advanced and progressed to a stage or to a point where you've practiced law yes. and you've practiced a number of different areas of law. What, what are some of those areas of law you practice in? Yes. Yeah, so I'm a family mediator. Okay. I do family law. So I'm a family lawyer. Mm-hmm. I represent injured workers um, under workers comp law. And then I also represent uh, disabled individuals in social security appeals. Okay. And, and so having been a refugee, and seeing what's going on in America around yeah. refugee issues, and not just under the Trump administration, but certainly that probably has escalated or amplified a lot of issues as it relates to refugee status and immigration law um, in America. But um, you, you've actually have represented or, or have done some work in the area of involving refugee law, right? No, I, I have not done immigration law. You haven't done immigration yeah, law? Yeah, I've always done the same areas, and those are mediation, uh, family law, workers' compensation, and Social Security disability. Because we were talking about whether or not refugees are protected under the Constitution, mm-hmm. immigration. You know, did they have rights and laws? And, and you had told me that they do, that they are protected, and that was new information for me. So, you know, when you see or you've heard a couple of things, and I know you haven't done a lot of mm-hmm. deep research, but... You know, um, what are some of the concerns and issues that longstanding issues that refugees face here in America as it relates to, you know, um, they're coming to America, they're uh, being able to get established, you, you know? Yeah, so refugees don't share all of the rights under the U.S. Constitution because they're subject to immigration law. But generally, refugees are entitled to the protection of the law under the U.S. Constitution. And so refugees, I mean, at the end of the day, I think what we have to remember is that everyone is just trying to make it. Yes, We're all working hard to pay the bills, to keep the lights on, to feed our kids. And so... As people, we have to remember that there's humanity in all of us. And so refugees have the same struggles as all of us do, but for their category of being called a refugee. And so, you know, that's housing, that's employment, uh, that's health, uh, that's education for them and for their children. When my parents came here, they had to attend uh, ESL, or English as a Second Language, classes. And then also they had to go to uh, the local technical college to gain some basic vocational skills so that they could be employable. Mm-hmm. Those are all struggles that everyone has, regardless of whether you're a refugee or not. Gotcha. Okay, so l- let's talk about Social Security Disability um, Law and Attorney. And what kind of situations might a person need a Social Security Attorney, Disability Attorney? Yeah, so when, when a claimant is denied, uh, they'll get a letter from the Social Security Administration that says, we've denied your claim. You have 60 days to appeal if you disagree with us. And at that point, the claimant then calls an attorney, and the attorney will assess their case and then decide if they take the case or not. 
Uh, that happens. So there are several levels, but the very three basic levels are the initial application, uh, reconsideration, which is done by DDS in Madison, and then the appeal to the administrative law judge, which is uh, most of them are done in Milwaukee here downtown, but there are also satellite locations where hearings are held throughout the state of Wisconsin. Now, Social Security law is federal law, so this is governed by federal law, and the administrative law judges are all federal employees. Okay. Now, you are from Kashua uh, Christy Yang LLC. That's yes. the law firm, Kashua Yang Law Firm. Okay. Yes. And so do you take a lot of these kind of cases? I do. A good, a good percentage of my uh, clients are Social Security claimants. Okay. Yes. So, so, so a lot of them. Now, what I'm trying to see is how does a person qualify for these benefits? I mean, is there a standard or... Yes. So there are two types of Social Security. There's Title 16 and then Title 2. Now, Title 16, uh, anyone basically could qualify for that. Uh, so long as you are severely disabled, uh, you have not uh, worked in a while, and your condition is expected to last at least 12 months or longer. Um so you don't have to have any work orders or work history to have benefits. Now, understandably, that also means that your benefit is going to be very low. Okay. Uh, Title II is based on your work history. So depending how much you've earned and, and how long you've worked, you're eligible to receive a, a disability rate that corresponds with your work history. And so that's how they determine. And when you apply, Social Security will, someone at Social Security will determine, should be determining whether you qualify for uh, 16 only or 16 and 2, a Title 2 or okay. a Title 2 only. So if your benefit rate is very high under Title 2, uh, there's no reason for you to apply for Title 16 because you can't double dip. You only get one or the other, with the exception that if you're, Title, if you if you qualify for Title Two and Title Sixteen, and your benefit rate under Title Sixteen is so low, um, yeah, I'm sorry, your benefit rate under Title Two is so low that it doesn't even meet, it doesn't even rise to the amount that you would get under Title Sixteen. Then Social Security will add, um, assuming that you're found disabled, Social Security will give you more money so that you at least get the minimum, which is the Title Sixteen rate. So when a claimant walks into your office and, and they have this letter of denial, um, and they say, okay, I want to engage your services, how long do it typically take, you know, for that process, you know, from start to finish, you know, before you get before administrative law judge and, you know, uh, yeah. and determine that either they're going to accept or they're going to reverse their decision or not? How long is that going to take? Oh, years. It can take years, really. <laughs> yes. Uh, unfortunately, Milwaukee is one of those. The Milwaukee ODAR office, which is the Social Security Appeals office here, uh, they're so backlogged. And across the nation, the Social Security offices are backlogged. Uh, but Milwaukee here, I think it's over 300-something days. And th that's days in their office. So remember, there are three levels. Um, there are more than three levels, but for... Uh, um, Today's purposes will say that there are three levels. After the third levels, there's appeals council in Virginia. So what are each of the levels? What, what? So initial claim. So initial that's claim. your okay. local office. Uh, reconsideration, which is Madison, DDS. Okay. Um, and then there's um, the administrative law judge level, okay. which can be here in Milwaukee or in other offices throughout the state. And then the, there's the appeals level, which is in Virginia. That's all done by writing. You don't appear in front of anyone. And then there's a federal court lawsuit that you could file if you should not succeed. So five any, levels? Yeah. That's five, it, okay. Right. So it's – and it takes it takes many years. Um, if I do take a case at the administrative law judge level, it's not uncommon for a case to – sit there for two years really? before we go before a judge due uh, to what backlogging strictly backlogging or yes what? yes the really? backlog of the office so a person can be living with a, dis a debilitating uh disease or uh medical condition for two years while waiting yeah i had i had one of the most tragic cases um well they're all tragic uh but one in particular which just happened uh late last year the day before our hearing, my client passed away. That was how sick he was. Mm. And so it, it wasn't something that we could um, readily anticipate. And so if we, if we could have, if we had known, 
uh, maybe at least a month before, I could have uh, called the office, the older office, and asked for them to put to get us in right away. But um, you know, he he fell ill uh, right about um, uh, the holidays, and then the day before his hearing, he passed away. So his wife had to come in and stand in his place to continue uh, the appeal. And, and would she have been rewarded the benefits for back pay? Yeah. So we won the case, and okay. she yes. That's, so that's she, tragic. That's tragic. Yeah, it was. It was, and it it was. Yeah. So, so with this, okay. So they come in, and I mean, I imagine there's some type of initial interview or vetting process. You know, what can a person expect when they walk into a social security disability law firm or, or to, to meet with an attorney? Yeah. So for me at my office. Um, in, a, in an effort to avoid wasting the claimant's time, because one, these are disabled individuals, and so they are relying on family and friends to take them to my office to help them gather their documentation. And so what I always say when people call is, the policy of my office is that when people call about Social Security claims, if they've already applied I and they've been denied, I ask that they obtain their Social Security file okay. from the local office. Because that file will have certain information that the claimant won't know and understand, but I will. And I can review those documents before I meet with the client, with the potential client. And if there are certain things that, that I think was missed, then that allows us an opportunity to argue on appeal. But if I look at the file and, and they did cross all their T's and dot all their I's, they meaning Social Security, and there's just not enough documentation to prove the disability, then... At least I can tell the potential client that so that they can work on finding that additional information to help their own case. And the other thing, too, is that I don't take all cases because some cases could be won by themselves. And so oh, okay. I, there's no point for me to take the case and take a cut of that back pay right. when they can if they could just know where to go get the information and win their own case and say, you know, have all of their back pay to themselves. Why? Why shouldn't I help them to do that? And that's really I think that's really nice of you and kind of you to allow folks to, you know, provide that information to folks and say, yeah. listen, you know, save yourself some money. All you need to do is A, B, C, and you should be able right. to win this case yourself. So that's really great. Yeah. Now, is there a particular list? Um, I think I read something about a disability list or something that is like a blue book that yeah. is used uh, in Social Security disability in that community that determines what type of conditions that a person could, you know, be compensated for or receive disability for? Right. So uh, there are listings, and if you meet one of those listings or more than one of those listings, you're presumed to be disabled, and Social Security is supposed to grant you disability benefits. Okay. Um, now, if anyone has ever applied, they'll know that they're subjected to all of these tests and exams by doctors who have been hired by Social Security. Right. And so wow. it's that great area that you have to be able to navigate and, and um, provide the right amount and, and correct amount of information so that Social Security could assess your case uh, appropriately. And so if you don't know how to do that and you just go through the process, you're more likely to be denied. But in any event, going back to the point, which is that if you provide the information and uh, you meet the listings, Social Security is supposed to find you disabled and just award you benefits. That's what the listing is there for. So you can't use your own doctors. You have to use the doctors who are referred by the Social Security? No, you, you do use your own doctors. Okay. You, you go and treat and see your doctor, follow their order just like, mm -hmm. like you normally do when, when you're ill. But at certain points in the process, Social Security will go and hire an attorney, uh, a doctor to evaluate you, to give a medical opinion uh, as to your illness. Okay. And so those are just contracted doctors who give opinions. Okay. So, folks, if they, they have uh, mental illness, they can receive Social Security for that. If they have um, heart and blood vessel disorders, yeah. they like anemia, um, coronary artery disease is my understanding, they can get Social Security benefits, as well as muscle, joint, and bone impairments, um, osteoporosis, and also carpal tunnel syndrome. I was not aware of that. Are those some of the kind of cases that you have represented? or? Yes, but it it's not that clear because... Um, it, it, you have to look at the the full picture, and okay. so the the re, one of the criteria is that you're not able, in order to become eligible for benefits, is that you're not able to engage in substantial gainful employment. And so, if you have, um, let's say, if I'm an attorney and the bulk of my work is um, 
preparing documents, engaging with clients, you know, appearing in court hearings and whatnot. So they're they're more desk work, right? Mm -hmm. And I let's just say I don't do a whole lot of computer work. Even if I have carpal tunnel, which we call CTS, okay. I'm not going to be disabled by Social Security standards because I can still do certain work. Gotcha. And so, but if, let's say... You know, if, if all I've ever done in my life is, and I'm, I don't have anything beyond um, a high school education, maybe I don't even have a high school education, and I do, let's say, manual labor where mm-hmm. I use my hands, and that's all I've done for the last 20 years, and I have an 8th grade or ninth grade level education, and I have carpal tunnel, I'm more likely to be found disabled. Okay, okay. Listen, we have a caller on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Um, I have a question for the attorney. Have she heard about any changes coming down from Madison um, uh, uh, concerning SSI? Okay. Um, Because I think I heard that they were going to either turn it off or or something of that nature last week. I was wondering had she heard that. Thank you for that question. I have not heard uh, anything like that. Um, As I said before, uh, Social Security law is federal law. So I don't know that the state would have uh, would be have the ability to interfere with these benefits. Now, I I do want to uh, state that uh, to make the statement that the state of Wisconsin uh, is one of the, of those states where they would add additional benefits to the benefit you get from Social Security, but that's minimal. Uh, so they add a little more to what the federal will give you. So if that's the portion that they're that they've been talking about taking away, then I, I I have not heard that. But that would be what they might be able to do. But otherwise, the benefit is a federal benefit. Gotcha, caller. You're on the Fresh Start Today show. You have a question or comment for Attorney Yang? Caller, are you there? Hello. Yes, go ahead. You have a question yeah, or comment? You better fade it out there, Mr. Reed. Um, I just wanted to call in and, and say a couple of things. First of all, um, community ought to thank Ms. Yang. She gave some very good information this morning. You're welcome. I work with a number of refugees trying to obtain Social Security, and fortunately, we've had a good relationship with Social Security Office here in Milwaukee over on Layton Street, and so we've been quite successful. But the important thing is that she said, and what I really appreciate her saying is, is that in most cases, in many cases, I should say, um, the people can obtain their own Social Security. They don't need to uh, obtain an attorney. It's a matter of getting the proper paperwork, the proper documentation before Social Security during that initial phase of it. The attorney becomes important once you provide it what is actual relevant information and substantially related to your inability to work, then the attorney becomes important. And and when you can provide the attorney with that kind of information, I believe Ms. Yang will tell you she's more often than not very successful at obtaining those benefits. So I just called in to tell her that we appreciate that she's out there doing this kind of thing. And if she could leave her number you know, because I'm sure that quite a few people are going to want to call her. Thank you so much. I appreciate you calling, listening. Thank you. So so this administrative hearing judge or this hearing before an administrative law judge, let's talk about that. I mean, do you prep your uh, clients for that meeting, and what does that look like exactly? What kind of questions that you might present or pose to them? Yeah, so I I do. I always, my rule in my office is that I always prep my clients before hearing, and those uh, prep time are at least an hour and a half to two hours. It's so important because at the administrative judge level, that is the only time, and I will emphasize this, the only time the claimant gets to have a face-to-face conversation with the person who will determine their life. Mm. And that is so important. Um, after that, if you lose and you appeal, it's all done in writing. And so if you have an attorney, the attorney will write briefs for you. But it's so important to make sure that you're able, that the claimant is able to tell his or her story. The goal that I always tell my clients is that you have to be able to tell your story in such a way that the judge can understand your limitations. So say, for example, you know, if someone says... uh, 
oh, I'm tired all the time. Well, gee, I'm tired all the time too. We're all tired all the, t- all the time. But <laughs> I'm what? Tired right yeah. Now. <laughs> so <laughs> what does it? <laughs> right. So like, what does it mean that you're tired? How okay. is that different from the average person? Okay. And it's. It's difficult because the very reason why they're there applying for benefits is because maybe they can't convey that, and that's why they've been denied. So my job when I prep my clients is to help them tell their story uh, according to the standards that the judge will be judging them on, so that they can convey their story, their illness in a way that matches up with the legal standard. And that's that takes a lot of time. It takes.、Um, Some thinking, and obviously they're there because they need help with that, and that's the reason why they've been denied. So it's it's difficult, but I I always plan for at least an hour and a half to two hours to prep. I know that I've been to some hearings. I've heard、um, that you know some people don't prep their clients, and I just or that they're meeting their clients for the first time at the hearing. It it just blows my mind. Why、uh, that would be okay? Because it is not. This is the only time a claimant gets to see the judge. So when they ask questions like, for example,、um, and because you talked about being very specific, it's very specific in your responses. You know, so you you gave the question, okay, if you're tired, how tired? Yeah.、Um, how does that differ from the tiredness that everybody else feels, the general population? So do they ask, okay, you know, how long have you been sick? When did you first notice that you were sick? Do they ask, do they ask you questions like that? You know.、Um, Do you work now? Have you done any work since you've been injured? I mean, are there questions like that that you that you would、mm-hmm. present、um, in prepping your,、uh, your your clients so they know what to expect? I mean, I'm、yeah. just trying to wrap my mind around how that looks. Yeah. So、uh, we have to remember that the Social Security uh, process uh, for benefits is non-adversarial. So we're not there to fight the judge to fight there and. There is no attorney for Social Security. Most of the times, I'm the you know I'm the only attorney in the room because it's non-adversarial. And so what that means is that the judge is just simply there to listen, to gather information,、uh, objective facts, and then make a decision. And so our job is to help the judge get that information. And so、uh, when I gave the example of being tired, you know, for someone who is ill. If they carry, if they walk, I don't know. Maybe if they walk a block, they're exhausted for the next two, three hours. Whereas for you and me, we, you know, we walk a block and we just keep going. And so, even though we get exhausted, right? But、mm-hmm. we keep going.、Uh, so it's that, you know, it w- the、um, what we say is the residual capacity, right? Like after you do something, how much energy do you have left, and how is that different from an average person? Gotcha. So. The administrative law judge. You're running for the Milwaukee County Circuit Court judge. Yes. Did you? I mean, have you considered being an administrative law judge? I mean, and and I mean, because I just learned from the caller that just called in. He talked about that、um, refugees can receive Social Security benefits. That's news to me. Yes. You know, th- there are certain 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 categories of refugees can receive benefits. Okay. Like that, that's, which one? That's determined by Congress. That's determined by Congress. Okay.、Yeah. So, so the question, you, you know, you run for county circuit, Milwaukee County Circuit Court judge,、um, and folks can go on your website if they want to、uh, find out particular information about that.、Uh, what, what is the website? Yang for Judge、okay. dot org. So they can go to Yang for Judge、uh, dot com and, and look at dot all org. De- or dot org. Sorry, and look at those details. But had you ever considered being an administrative law judge? I have,、um, and administrative law judges are hired.、Uh, they don't run for office. Okay. But you know, I went to law school because I wanted to help people, and it's obvious to me that if I want to help people, then the role I need to be in is that of a judge. Circuit court judges、uh, are state judges, and、okay. their jurisdiction and ability to affect the lives of people is much different from an administrative law judge. Uh, especially uh, a social security. Because I have a disability, and、yeah. you have my life in your hands. I mean,、right. you know, I, I almost、yeah. see it balancing. But again, I'm I'm not in that、right. legal field, so yeah. So、uh, social security administrative law judge or ALJ, their their only job is to determine someone's disability and award benefits, and that's it. But a circuit court judge has the ability to make very important decisions across. Uh, a greater spectrum of one's life, and、um, most importantly, the fabric of our community. And so, the to the degree that you are able to help the community,、uh, it's different between the two, and and the power invested in each office is different. 
Well, you know what, Attorney Kashua Christy Yang, I appreciate you stopping by the breakfast table on the Rise and Shine Morning Show and educating the community about dis- SSI disability uh, law and uh, services that your office renders. And you know, certainly wish you well in your, Thank you. Uh, your quest to become a, a circuit judge. And um, how can folks get in contact with you at your law firm if uh, they have questions or maybe need to retain your services? Thank you. It's been a pleasure being on air with you. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, they can call my office at 414-395-2835, 414-395-2835, and we'd be happy to answer any questions they may have. Well, I hope you can come back. Thank you. I would love to. All right. Take care. Listen, um, it's 816 a.m. in the morning, and uh, we certainly appreciate Attorney Yang for coming in and talking about Social Security Disability. And now we're going to switch shifts and kind of go back to the stove and turn up the flames. We have uh, the blacksmith himself. We can already stir the pot on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Uh, Kashua Yang, she just got things started, but this man is about to, to burn some bacon. And Okay, so let, let's talk about it. You know, there was a uh, poll that was conducted by the public policy poll, Dr. Smith. Uh, yes, sir. And this dated January 31, 2017, and talks about Milwaukee County finds that Sheriff David A. Clark Jr. is very unpopular and has almost no chance of being reelected next year. That was a quote from their me- news media release. In fact, what it's talking about is that his popularity rate is somewhere around, I think it was 31 percent. 31 percent. Countywide. County-wise, but among Democrats, it was like, um, wow, I can't remember what it was. It, it was, it was very low, 13% um, among the Democratic voters. That's pretty low. So Democrats could be black, white, whatever, whatever. Now, there were 1,260 folks who were surveyed. You know, this was not um, something where this company, public policy polling, was actually paid to do. They just did it. You know, um, so 13% popularity. David Clark, Junior Sheriff Clark, was on a program earlier this week. I'm not sure if he knew that these numbers were coming out. He has not been very responsive to um, local black media. I mean, he's on, uh, I forget that man, Glenn Beck show. He sat in for him. He's on Fox News as a, um, you know, contributor. But in terms of the black community, you know, and the question, there were three questions that this survey uh had out of what 15 out of 13 questions three of them specifically were related to sheriff clark question five says do you approve or disapprove of the job sheriff david clark is doing 31 percent approved 62 percent disapproved seven percent were were not sure question number six said do you think sheriff clark has a positive or negative impact on Milwaukee County's image. The last question, which is question eight, said among 722 Democratic primary voters, if the Democratic primary for sheriff was held today, would you vote for David Clark or someone else? Now, 13 percent said they would vote for uh, Sheriff Clark. 82 percent said someone else. 4% 4% said they weren't sure. Now, let's go back to the positive image, whether or not Sheriff Clark has a positive image on Milwaukee County, yes or no. Well, 29% said they felt he had a positive image. He has a positive Im- He's made a positive impact on the image of Milwaukee County. 65% said he has a negative impact on Milwaukee County's image. 5% were not sure. When you think about those numbers, what, what comes to your mind? What are you thinking about this whole thing? Well, you know, numbers lie, and I know they say numbers don't lie, but the the polls that had Hillary uh, Clinton well ahead of Trump, uh, so they had unexpected voters. But I think these numbers are a little bit more true to life, so you have to look at it in perspective. And when we look at these numbers right here, what we see is a sheriff who had uh, paraded as a Democrat for many years, had capitalized on um, online voting as far as uh, straight party line voting, excuse me, and uh, capitalized on that. because. And and let's be honest, uh, the sheriff clerk of today, is not the Sheriff Clark of even 10 years ago, as far as with some of his conversation. So as he has become more aligned uh, with the Republican Party, which I think really he probably was more so in the beginning, to be honest with you, um, it's not so much that his politics change, but I think it's that the way his rhetoric 
began and it became more divisive. And so when you look at a level of popularity, it's not so much that your politics have changed, but you know what else has changed? Your your negative divisive rhetoric, but also you spend a lot of time out of the out of the, the city, which means you're not inside of your own home. And your home has issues. You know, it's like you, Jermaine. You go out on the road, but if something's happening in your house, what you do? You come, you come back home, home, take care. You've had four deaths inside of your homes. But okay. yet you're still out parading. You're out politicking. You're out campaigning for an individual. And that is your right. But if there is trouble at home, there is an ability for you. There, There's a necessity for you to be there. And so I think people understanding his divisive politic and rhetoric and his talk combined with the lack of ability to literally do the job in which you've been elected to do has caused for the great decline in this popularity. Now, we're, we're up against a break. We're going to take this break on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. And we want to talk about um, Sheriff Clark's approval rating in particularly the black community. Um, those black folks living in Milwaukee County, there were 1,260 folks who were surveyed a part of the public policy see polling uh, we weren't i wasn't called i don't know if you were called or anybody that's listening no, to the program were called but let's just say um you weren't well this is our opportunity to take our unofficial poll um and whether or not folks believe that sheriff david a clark has a positive negative impact on milwaukee's uh county's black community uh we'll talk about that on the other side of this break you listen to rise and shine morning show on wnlb 860 a.m the voice all right you're back in the rise and shine morning show with your favorite cousin Bertha jeans baby boy jermaine reed and my favorite cousin mr keon jackson malone and we have in the studio our distant cousin mr dr uh ramel smith the blacksmith is here then we also have from youth justice mr uh Robert roman good morning how you doing gentlemen what's up family how y'all doing Oh, man, we talking, uh, the kitchen is on fire. Now, listen. No, it's just warm, but we're about to put it on fire. <laughs> we're about to blow some stuff up. Okay, now, listen, 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 because, you know, uh, Sheriff Clark, now, he's been everywhere on every news medium that you can think of. You know, uh, conservative talk show, uh, WISN, he's been a number of places, and um, he graced us with his presence, um, this community, on this radio station, uh, what was that, two days ago, and there was an interview, a um, highly anticipated interview. A lot of folks had listened to it, and not sure exactly what folks' uh, feelings were about that. You know, I only was able to catch a portion of it. But the question is, you know, whether or not uh, folks in this community, folks who helped him get into office, believe that he is, um, he casts a positive or negative impact on the black community in Milwaukee County. And we have a caller, caller, question or comment. Good, good morning, Jermaine. Yes, sir. Good, good, good morning, Dr. Smith, once again. Yeah, t- Tyrone W. Speaking. Good, good morning, uh, Milwaukee. Good morning, Keon, nephew. Uh, I, I uh, you know, um, let me say this. Uh, people are looking for answers. You know, that, that uh, um, the woman was serving her time down there. there. There's no reason why the baby should have received a death sentence because her mother was, you know, serving the time she was serving. So, uh, the, the, she, you know, the, the family of the uh, baby and the family of the woman, they, they need those answers, as well as the man that, you know, didn't get the water, you know. So, I mean, you know, uh, I didn't see the survey. I'm just, you know, getting through you all there. But, I mean, you know, like I said, um, I don't know what he's morphed into now, but uh, no, not this time. I can't vote for him anymore. Got no, you. Thanks you, a lot. You know, but uh, I'll say this, and um, I, I, I'll hang up, but, um, yeah, uh, uh, you know, we, you know, the public is looking for answers down there. You know, we got to get those answers, and we have to continue to pry for those answers. Gotcha. Thank you. Thanks, Good weekend. All right. Family, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? Yes. Good morning, first off. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so I wanted, I wanted to call in. I was trying to call in yesterday to actually uh, uh, Sherwin show. Um, but I heard the 20-minute um, interview, but I didn't get to hear the whole thing the other day. But the, what I got of it is he deflected most of the issues. And so this, the thing that frustrates me most with him is like, yeah, you feel comfortable with going out and telling everybody else what the problem is in the, in the um, urban community, but what are you doing? Anybody can say what the problem is, but who's on the ground? Are you on the ground? No. You don't see this guy nowhere near around in the a, in a city of Milwaukee. Like, why are you with the running rebel? Why aren't you mentoring somebody? Why aren't you doing the things that you say – that affect the community and needing strong black leadership, where are you? I got we hear you. you. We hear you on Fox. We hear you on, on uh, uh, Charlie, when Charlie Sykes was around. But we hear all these other things, and he still has an answer for the situation with his uh, a fellow um, officer hitting a young lady and then saying that she was drunk. 
he still had the answer for that. So if, if there was an election held today for the sheriffs, would you vote for him or not? No, I mean, I just... I got you. I, All right. We want to make room for other folks. Thank you for calling. Carla, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Would you, you have a question or comment? I have a comment. Um, I just wanted to say I agree with the caller uh, before me, and I will not be voting for Sheriff Clark this time around either. I voted for him every time, but not this time, and yeah. I'll listen. Thank you very much. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? Good morning. I have a comment. No. I will not be voting for Sheriff Clark. All right. Um, Is there a reason why? The reason why is because he's a liar. He's a politician, and he's a liar. He's not taking care of the community in the way that he came on air and said that he was. Um, He now needs the black community, and we're no longer going to be there for him. So he needs to earn his pay somewhere else. Not through our taxes. All right. That's it. Th- thank you very much. Now, I'm wondering, do you think that the sheriff had a motive for being on black radio a couple of days ago? You know, I, I can't speak for, for what his motive was for doing it, but this this is what I want to say. I was so, so, let me just be honest, I was disappointed in the callers. They called in the, to Sherwin show yesterday, and they was, like, sympathetic to um, the sheriff. And I was like, man, they fell for the okie doke. Because I'm going to tell you what, and, and, and I hope I hope he's listening. Because he needs help. You know, uh, I'm a psychologist, and so looking at it from the outside, I study people's behaviors. I study their language. And with him being in Milwaukee, we, we, I have access to other information, specifically working in the Department of Corrections, having friends in that department. This man is extremely intelligent. And so what he did is he came in and he gave a false sense of glib. And we use that for people who we call sociopaths or psychopaths because these are people who have very, very uh, charming personalities. But it's insincere. Now, we look at everything in what she said. Now, I've done, I've been able to be blessed to do national radios. And I did a show with Carl Nelson, with Dick Gregory. And they was like, oh, you, you, you work with the Milwaukee Bucks. So well, what's going on with that David Clark down in Milwaukee? I said, hey, he don't represent the black folk down in Milwaukee. You don't think so? No, 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 no. I, this, this is what I'm saying. No, because people say, like he says, you know what he says? I've been voted on since, two, since the early 2000s. I must be doing something right. And this is the whole thing. With him... The reason why he can align with Trump so much, think about it. Nobody likes Trump, but when they go in and talk to him, what do they they come out? He's a great guy. You know what? He's a lot different than what I thought. Because even narcissistic personality disorders can be charming. That's the lure and how they trap you in. They give you these things, and as the caller stated, you know what? He deflected. It's not about me. It's about Chris Abley. It's about the mayor. But my thing is this. All of you are part of Milwaukee City, Milwaukee County. Why aren't our leaders working together? You know, united we stand, divided we fall. And if you understand this, and it's so divisive, what are the things that you're doing? But not just talking about them. Then clearly talk about your failures inside of the community. You talk about the other community leaders about what's happening in Milwaukee. Why hasn't it been done? The last caller just put that point on blast the best way you can. Because you know what she said? You've been here just the same. You're an elected official. And guess what? You have national notoriety more than anybody else in the city. So with that type of power, you can bring in dollars. You can bring in resources to help with the serious issues going on. And when we needed him the most. So why do you think he's not using that influence to empower or to help this did, community. did you hear me? I told you he's a narcissistic. It's all about himself. So when you think about all of the oh, money. throwing flames at me. Right, but but hold on. We, we have a caller on the rise of Shy Marshall. Caller, good morning. Call. Like, good morning to you. Yes, sir. Man, you got a lot of intellect in there this morning. Hey, let me, let me say this right quick. Um, what, what, I'm, what, what, as far as Sheriff Clark, he, he, he picked and chose his platform is what he did. You got to give him credit for, for having wisdom now. He picked and chose what he was going to do, and he, he had a home run. Okay, but here, here's my dilemma. I can't understand what we are doing, us, us as a race. I can't understand why everybody is under, I, Maybe it's not for me to understand, but I, no, I'm not seeing how people are seeing, are still saying the ones that were calling in the last few days, is still supporting this man. What the hell is wrong with us? Ridiculous. I, I think man, that's silly. That's, that, that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really upset at us. Okay, thank you, man. No, wait, wait, wait. Would you vote for him if there was an election today? I'm taking a poll. You got that clear. He's gone. Hell to the no. No, 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 Listen, hold on one second. Uh, Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? I have a short comment. Yes. And my short comment is that uh, 
we need, I don't know if your host there can do this or not, we need to get the point of where the person is. Sheriff Clark is not a city worker. He's a county, county sheriff. Worker. Mm -hmm. His duties is not here in right. the city, right around here in the city. His job is to be in the county. Now, they got state troopers and all of this. He don't supposed to jump in. But he can help out when there is a catastrophe or, or something real, real bad. But we need to know what his job is. Now, what we are all doing, we are, we are all, me, me right now, making things look better for him. Because when we talk about him all of this time, all of this and that, that. But the good point that I want to make is that he had been running all over the country and all around and around doing that. But then we complain about it. But when he comes to our local thing, which he should do sometimes, we vilify him for that. Now, he is not one of my favorite people. Because when I worked for the county and we used to have to meet each other, come bring people to court, we argued and fuss all the time. I mean, we talked about everything about each other, but we didn't talk about our mama. Now, he was my Scotch enemy when I was down there in the sheriff and bringing the prisoners in and all of this. But there's always one that's like that. He may be, uh, you know, big that, but then he can get the attention of people. And I, I work the voting polls, so okay. I can't give you the thing whether I would vote. I, I can't do that part. I can't publicly say that because uh, it would, you know, I understand my position. So, so but what we need to do is the ones who's talking, if they can vote, then they get out there and, and vote against him or for him. But a lot of people doing all this talk. But for vote. those of us who can, if you were, if there was an election today, Mama Rose, she would says you? She can't tell us. She, oh, you can't tell us. Okay, I'm sorry, you can't tell. So, 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 would your sister vote for him? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mama Rose, we gotta take another call. I love you. You get them biscuits ready. Get the biscuits ready, Mama Rose. All right, listen, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Jermaine Reed. How you doing? Sir? Oh, this is JT. This is the true soldier. Good morning, JT. <laughs> good morning to you, sir. Good morning to Brother Keon. Good morning to you, Dr. Smith. Good morning, Brother JT. Always great to hear your voice. Likewise, sir. Good morning to the, uh, the listening community. You know what? As quiet as it's kept, as quiet as it's kept, gentlemen, uh, the reason why David Clark got some of the black community to vote for him since 02, up until the last time he ran, it's because of the late rep state representative Annette, Annette Polly Williams. Okay. Now, Polly Williams was very loved and very deeply respected in our community because she's been watching out for black folks for over 30 years. So we knew Polly Williams. And she knew so she opened that door. Polly. She opened that door because she, because Polly just loved black folks no matter what. That's right. How Polly was. That was her mantra. And, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Sheriff David Clark took advantage of that and, mm. and, and, exploded, and exploded the hell out of her, okay? I'm sure she turned over in her grave right now. Excuse me for saying that Miss Potty Williams' family, but I'm just being honest. The only reason I didn't think a lot of black folks voted for Sheriff Clark was because of Annette Potty Williams. Now, since she's not here anymore, let's see, what, let's see what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Would you vote let's for him or no if there was an election today, oh, Jason? Come on, Hey, I'm going to be honest with you. I, when he first came about, I did vote for him in 02 because, you know, his demeanor was definitely different, like uh, Dr. Smith indicated. His whole demeanor was very different then. And that's, only t that's the first time. The second time, I did not because I checked him out by that time. If there was an uh, election that, today, would you vote hey, for him, yes or no? Today? Oh, how the hell no. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> All right, JT, you better sing that song. We're going to talk to you later, JT. <laughs> Is that the anthem today? Hell no, to the no, no, no. Okay, uh, caller, you on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Would you vote for Sheriff Clark if there was an election held today? Yes or no? Absolutely not. This is this is Mr. Debo, man, and, and I, I really enjoy your show. I want to say that to you. But, but certainly, uh, one thing that, and I don't know if anyone has alluded to it, that came out in the, the news this morning on Fox 6, we watched it. Uh, David Clark has received a little over two hundred thousand dollars for those speaking engagements and traveling across the country. Two hundred forty-one thousand. Uh huh. So again, a lot of this may have a lot to do with making money and saying what they want to have to say. I, I don't. 
think that he could be retarded enough to believe some of the things he says himself. Uh, but certainly, uh, you never can not tell with him. And again, I would, I have voted for him in the past in every election because I I, I kind of use that same thought process that that Polly and, and you know put out there with us. Right, right. But but I certainly, you know, would not vote for him now. And I, I've seen a side of him that is just despicable, for lack of a better word. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, caller, you on the Rise and Shine Morning Show? If there was any, okay, we missed our call. I, I, caller. Hello. Go ahead, caller. Oh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Oh, awesome. I uh, have voted since so too for uh, Sheriff Clark, and I will continue to vote for him if he runs in the future. All right. If he runs for senator. I will vote for him for senator. All right, sounds great. Appreciate your your input. Well, he has one vote. Okay. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Uh, question or comment? How you beautiful black folks are doing today? We're doing beautiful. great. All right. Hey, I just had to give a shout-out to a, 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 to the soldier there, man. He hit my spot. I'm going to be laughing for all day about that one. Um, I like to say, yeah, I would vote for Sarah Carp again. Okay, so after that why? Speech, after I heard him... Uh, Talking to a uh, uh, Sherwin? Sherwin yesterday. Okay, um, he made a lot of sense in his stance. I you got know, you. What he had to go through, and then we got to look at him too. That he a black man. Okay, and the position he in and the power, he got to kind of kiss that butt on that side. He got to stand oh, wow. up against the cousins wow. and nephews on this side. Then he got to be true to himself. On another side, then he got a white woman, you know, and he black. You know, everybody hate him for what he do. He stand for what he stand for, and he ain't taking nobody's BS. And he he doing what the way he want to do it. I guess okay, we black man. I I appreciate that. I appreciate your perspective. Thanks for listening, my friend. Now now listen, um, Doctor Francis Cress Welsing, she quoted Doctor Neely Foley saying, "Racism is a global system. Every black person must master and understand. It is essential to our future. We are taught that we live in a system of capitalism, democracy, etc. But racism is a system that operates in every area of human activity: law, politics, religion, media, education, housing, labor, entertainment, corrections, economics, etc. This system of racism is about maintaining the power equation of white domination over non-white communities." It is not only important for us to know what the system is, but why it exists. And the question, Dr. Smith, is what role do some black folks have in preserving this racist system of oppression of people of color? And do you see David Clark's, you know, being a person who perpetrates this, who preserves this system? You just answered the question. That's that's exactly what it is. you know, the, the caller alluded to a lot of different things that, that he has to do certain things. No, you don't. You don't see Minister what Farrakhan uh, compromising his values or anything like that. And even if you say, well, I'm not an extreme as, as a Minister Farrakhan, you can still be a righteous black man that takes pride in yourself and say, you know what? I'm going to stand up for the right thing, even if it costs me certain things. This guy. Literally, we, we talk about we want to vote for him because he's black. And it's like just because wow. a person is black in color doesn't mean they have a the sentiment. Come on. They they replaced Clarence Thomas with Thurgood Marshall. Was that a, replacing a black for a black? Come on. I mean, let's right. talk. We, here we have a man. We okay. said we want to respect because he's black. But when we had a black president to come, he didn't even want to do security detail. The great patriot that he is. Come on. On man. the strength of being black. Okay, now listen, I got somebody from You Justice Service here, so we're going to take these last two calls. Oh, no, you say keep it going. Okay, so caller, you on the Rise and Shine morning show. Rise and Shine, Rise and Shine. How y'all doing? Man, I'm doing good. It's good to hear your voice. What's on your mind, cousin? Oh, well, I put it to you like this, man. You know, I think he played the game a little bit too rough. I think he came into it a little bit too hard with the rhetoric and stuff like that. But, man, if you change his ways, they can always come back home to us, man. We are forgiving people, man. We're taking back. If the election was held today, February the second, black the second month, the black, second day of Black History Month in America, would you vote for Sheriff David A. Clark? Yes or no? I gotta fight with the chorus. Hell no to the no no no. Oh, the choir singing today. You go on to sing your song. Good morning. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show. You have a question or comment? Yo, I have a comment. I uh, I think Sheriff Clark speaks truth to power. I okay. would uh, vote for him. Um, the comment that the other gentleman had made, because how can you hate somebody for marrying a person that they love? This man is real. You look at the police chief we have. What has he done? What has Tom Barrett done? This guy is not afraid to, to, to get it on and to uh, mix it up. 
and he, to me, represents the people of Milwaukee very well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, family, for your input. Caller, if Sheriff Clark was... (laughs) Well, if there's an election today, would you vote for Sheriff David A. Clark Jr., yes or no? Definitely not. Now, why wouldn't you vote for the black man? Come on now. Well, there's two reasons. For one, I can't vote. I'm a felon. Okay. Okay. But uh, the second reason is because um, even though, okay, there's like two parts to this real quick. First of all, I, I, I would say David Clark is racist, okay? Um, but the second part of that is, despite like I listened to the interview and he did say some things that made sense. You know what I mean? Let's just be honest. Some things he said made sense or, you know, had me like, okay, that's true. That makes a little sense. But on the end of that, I was hoping for at the end of all that, you know, where's the compassion? You know, what are you doing? You named a laundry list of things that are wrong with our community. Okay. What are you doing to help change though? I got you. That's, that's the part where, He's missing the he's dropping the ball. You know what I mean? It's like I, I, I got you. I'm up against this clock. I yep. hate this clock, cousin, but I appreciate your call. Cousin Kia. So so you asked if if they would vote for There's David an election today. today. Yeah. But if the election was today, all we have is David Clark versus Judge Seifert. Would you vote for David Clark or Judge Seifert? You gotta put that out there. Okay, somebody, okay, somebody, okay. Somebody that's giving astronomical time to black folks in the system. Okay. I would whoever's up against David Clark. I mean, his track record. Somebody, somebody, somebody that's that's giving your your, your child a, a life sentence for four hundred years. Yeah. Okay. What okay. A, what, a, what a good thing is about that, Keon, and, and even to Mama Rose's point when she was like, "Well, why are we talking about?" It? I think what we have to do is we can't get fooled and we can't get lulled into sleep. And what we have to do is have a viable candidate to run against him. So as we talk about this, a lot of people who are saying he's not doing this, he's not doing that. Well, what we have to do is find a person I want you to run. who is qualified. I want to run. If I if I was qualified in law enforcement, I promise you I would run. And just to the callers, I, I would care. If Mickey it. Mouse yeah. was running. I would yeah. vote for Mickey Mouse. We have no, a no, call no, on no. the Rise and Shine Morning Show. What's the, help me, Jesus. Good morning. Good um, morning. What I'm going to say was I voted for Clark in the past, and the reason why I voted was because of, of ignorance. It was because on the ballot you could vote straight, straight Democrat. party. Yes, and so I think that's the reason why he continually. Got would you me. vote today for David A. Clark and whoever this <clears throat> other person might be running is? Who, would, you, would he get your vote? My grandmama from Kojic, but this morning I'm going to say hell to the no, no. <laughs> sing your song, sister. Sing your song. It's a great day. You're listening to the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Would you vote yes or no? Yes, I'm grabbing right now, but real quick here. The man got issues and definitely not. All right. And you know what? I mean, on this website, he refers to himself, I think, as like the black Rush Limbaugh. Okay. And, and, you know, somebody called me the black Dr. Phil. I said, no, nah, you never call me no black white person. I said, I'm Ramel Smith. Now, if you want to compare me to somebody, at least give me Dr. Amos Wilson or Bobby Wright. So, and so, so what I'm saying is, and, and to the callers, I know Sheriff Clark wife. Uh, she's a realtor, and she helped me with my house. And she's one of the reasons why I voted for him, because I said if such a sweet soul could marry this person, it's got to be a good quality about him. <laughs> and I, no, no, no. Well, I could he marry I, Lucius? What are you talking hey, about? No, no, no. Honestly, <laughs> I, I feel sorry for her sometimes, because I, well, I understand she what she's talking about. I'm talking about, about <laughs> Sheriff Clark's wife. <laughs> Once again, what do we demand? Be- uh, uh, but we fuss and we complain. We, we, but what we do we force them? To, what do we stand we up and force them to do? Right. We, like we I let said, him when get you this far, when we let a lot of the other politicians get this far. We got other politicians who've been in office for five years, right. ten years, fifteen I don't think years. Sheriff Clark and the problem is about Wisconsin, Milwaukee. I think that there's well, something I, on the I, national. I, I, I think you're wrong. I want so, him to get help because I'm concerned about him. We're, I'm not hating. Right. Him. I want Dude, him to get right. some, racism, some, some, racist behavior on mental side. You know what it sounds like? That malignant. He suffers from a lack of self love. My, that's deep. And when you don't have a love of self, you're always looking and searching for somebody to find yourself to connect with. And if the white people will allow you to talk about your black folks. Hey, talk about black folks. Like 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 black folks. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. Hello. Yes, uh, ma'am. I'm in agreement. Um, I First of all, I would not vote for him again. I voted for him before because he was a black man and I wanted to try to empower my own people. Yes. This man is dangerous. This man is not, uh, really, he's not a black man. He just has some skin. Some colored skin. He is, uh, you know, a white folks' Negro and uh, the most dangerous type of black man. 
uh, in America because he is racist. We can be racist against ourselves, you know. It's not just a, uh, you know, and I think he's that. And he's getting on the shoulders of us to rise up himself, you know. I got you. My sister, but, I appreciate you. So he wouldn't get your vote. Thanks, thanks so much. Caller, you're on the Rise and Shine Morning Show. All right, how y'all doing? I'm, I'm all right. Would you vote yes or no? Would you vote for David Sherrod Clark today or no if there was an election? Yes. All right. A- and why? He's doing a good job, isn't he? I mean, we, from what he's doing. I mean, based off what you know. So tell us. Don't, don't what ask, is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> what that? Four all right, people all right. died under this man's custody what he was, he was over. He didn't want to discuss it. I mean, he didn't want to talk died about under uh, Flynn's. Hey, and, and when they talk about Flynn and they talk about Ailey, they talk about Barry, like we parading them like they did something great. We're not saying they did something great either. Our, everybody in, that's talking on this microphone, everybody that's living in the city, everybody who's an elected official, we're all accountable for everything that's, that's happened. Right, but when you right. take on more of a leadership role, more the lion's share of the burden is upon you too because much, you too said. Much is given, much is required. I say. I when I is say, the next I sheriff's say. election? Is it 2018? 2018. So, so here's the thing. Talk to me, brother. Sheriff Clark came on the radio because there's an election in 2018. He ain't talking to us. Who are we talking He's to? He's talking then? to the folk outside of Milwaukee who's listening to WNOV in the morning and, and from 9 to 12 who don't even live in Milwaukee, who's voting for him. And so the question is not about, are we going to vote for Sheriff Clark? The question is, who's voting for him outside of Milwaukee that puts him in office year after year? And that's going to happen again in 2018. That's why he came. That's why he's doing He's not talking to us. This is a political strategy to win a seat because he knows that we're not going to vote for him regardless because we can't, because we felons, or because we don't vote. The voting numbers for local elections are dismal. So he not, he's not talking to he's us. Playing chess, he's, not he's playing chess, he's checkers. not checkers. He's playing chess, not checkers. He is using us to get votes on the outside of Milwaukee because he knows that's a strategy that, that can win because he's winning at it year after year. Nobody right, questions so his intelligence. Like, Nobody questions his line of wisdom. But I do question his ability to capable, uh, capably run his uh, institution. And that's what it is. Because, you know, we have a paid uh, commercial that we need to get to. Um, <laughs> Let's but pay this, them this, this I know the lines are full, and uh, the outcome of our poll is we've talked to 15 people. Ten of them said no, they would not vote for him. Three supporters said yes, I would. And one person is non applicable or they're uneligible. So we thank you all for your input. Um, I don't know. But um, for those folks who want to go to the Community Brainstorming Conference on September, no, February the 25th, that's focused on child welfare at St. Matthew's. That address is 2944 North 9th Street. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning for the breakfast, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock are the presentation for the panel guests. And then from 10 to 11 is a question and answer. And Dr. Ramel Smith, the blacksmith, will be there. Myself, I'm sure, will go show up. Um, and folks from St. A's are going to be there. Hopefully, DCF, DMCPS, and Children's Hospital will see the value in that they will show up and have a very meaningful conversation with the community. Now, there is a... Uh, what was that? So um, the the state law there's a there's a proposal on the on the books to uh, give Milwaukee Circuit Court judges more authority or more uh, more flexibility to send young people up to prisons for an extended amount of times um, at by Lincoln Hills. at yeah. Lincoln Hills and Copper Lakes and so uh, you Justice Milwaukee is really advocating we are totally against that and are working with some of our uh, local electeds and some of our state electeds to make sure that that proposal doesn't pass because we should not be sending more black and brown kids up to Lincoln. Is Hills there a phone number that folks can contact? Four one four two seven zero six nine five nine. Okay, Catch you tonight. Four one four Two seven zero six nine five nine, and I'll be here tomorrow. WNLV and University. All right, speaking. you all be well, be safe until Monday. Your favorite cousin, Bertha Jeans Bay Boy, will be back in the studio. You all be blessed, be well.